Today we've got a nice problem which comes from a 2005 Indonesian math contest. And it has to do with taking the product of digits of a natural number. So let's see what we have. We want to define a function which we'll call p from n to n by the rule that p evaluated at n is the product of the digits of n base 10. So we could do this for other bases if you wanted to, and that would be actually pretty interesting. Maybe after we're done with this, if you want to work out a couple of examples working in other bases, maybe post them in the comments. And then our goal is to determine all natural numbers n such that p evaluated at n is the same thing as n squared minus 2005 over 11. And just some quick examples, although you might want to write down a couple of more examples to see if there's some sort of pattern. p of 27 is 14. That's because 2 times 7 is 14. p of 98 is 72. That's because 9 times 8 is 72. I guess we could do one more if we wanted to. So maybe p of 54 is equal to 20. And then p of 59 is equal to 45. That's because 4 times 5 is 20 and 5 times 9 is 45. Maybe most intriguing about these four examples, as well as any other examples that you might make, having more digits if you'd like, is that p evaluated at n is always smaller than n. Notice that 45 is smaller than 59, 20 is smaller than 54, so on and so forth. So maybe that could be a claim that we start with, and perhaps that claim will give us an idea for how to gain a foothold from this problem. So like I said, our claim is that for all natural numbers n, we have p evaluated at n is less than or equal to n. I bet we could get some sort of stricter inequality, but as we'll see, this will be good enough for our purposes. Okay, so you might maybe be tempted to use induction on this because we're looking at a number n which is a natural number and in fact I think you could use induction maybe based on the number of digits but I think it's also pretty straightforward just to do it straight away with a calculation. So let's write our natural number n expanded in terms of its digits. So maybe I'll write it as a sub k times 10 to the k plus a sub k minus 1 times 10 to the k minus 1 all the way down to a sub 1 times 10 plus a sub 0 times 10 to the 0 which is 1. And so this would maybe be written as a k a k minus 1 all the way down a 1 a 0 with a bar over it. That's a standard way of writing something in terms of its digits. And maybe it's important to point out here that a sub i comes from the set 0 to 9, given that we're working base 10. Okay, so that's good. But now let's maybe start to make our approximation to build this inequality. So p evaluated in will be the product a k times a k minus 1 all the way down a 1 times a 0. But since we're working for an inequality, maybe I can make some sort of replacement. So since we know that a i is between 0 and 9, we know that all of these a i's are less than 10. So that builds the following inequality. This whole thing is less than a k times 10 times another 10 all the way down times 10 times 10. So what have I done here? I've replaced each of these with the number 10, thus creating something larger. Okay, but let's see, how many 10s do we have? We have exactly k 10s. We're counting from 0 to k minus 1. So this is going to be a sub k times 10 to the k. But that's less than or equal to our a sub k times 10 to the k plus all of the rest of the stuff, which is equal to n. So I guess the inequality that we've actually built is a tiny bit stronger. We have that p evaluated at n. In other words, the product of the digits of n is strictly less than n.
So let's see how we can use that to solve our problem. So far, we've shown that our product function is less than the input. In other words, P of N is less than N. But now let's see what that does for our problem over here. So let's suppose we have some natural number n that solves this equation. So in other words, such that p evaluated at n is the same thing as n squared minus 2005 all over 11. But what inequality does that set up? That tells me that n is going to be bigger than p of n, but I'll replace p of n with this guy right here. So n squared minus 2005 over 11. But then moving some things around, we see that this is the same thing as n squared minus 11n minus 2005 is less than zero. But that only happens for a finite set of numbers. And we know that because this is an upward facing parabola. Like for example, if we considered the function, maybe we'll call it f of x equal to x squared minus 11x minus 2005, we would see that the graph of this function maybe has the following shape. So it looks something like this. And you can find these zeros if you'd want to, although we're not gonna find them strictly because we'll just do an estimate which will be good enough for our purposes. Okay, so we've got this function set up and notice that we wanna find the points where this function is negative. So we're looking for all of the natural numbers that are in this region right here because those correspond to negative values of this function. Well, let's maybe first notice that if we evaluate this at, that if we evaluate this at 1, we get 1 minus 11 minus 2005. That ends up being negative 2015. That is less than 0. So definitely for n equals 1, this inequality is satisfied. Now let's find a place where it's not satisfied. We don't have to worry about finding the first place where it's not satisfied. Let's just find any place where it's not satisfied. Notice that if we evaluate f at 100, we get 100 squared minus, um, let's see, that's going to be 1,100 minus 2,005. So 100 squared is 10,000, and then we can make replacements of these with larger numbers and still end up bigger than zero. So maybe we'd replace this with 2,000, this with 3,000, so that's a total of 5,000. So this is going to be bigger than 5,000, which is itself bigger than zero. So that means the number 100 is way out here in the portion where that parabola is above the x-axis. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us the important values of n will be somewhere between 1 and 100. Because if we get to 100, this parabola is always over the x-axis, but that parabola being on top of the x-axis is equivalent to this inequality not being satisfied. So just to reiterate, the values of n between 1 and 100 are the only possible ones for this inequality to be satisfied. In fact, there are quite a few less because 100 is maybe a little bit too generous. But like I said before, this is good enough to solve the problem. Okay, well, let's see. If n is between 1 and 100, then that means we can write n as 10 times a plus b, where a and b both come from the set 0 through 9. So notice if they're both 9, we get 99, um, and it, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's take that information and we're ready to finish it off. So now we're pretty much home free. So we just finished determining that n was equal to 10a plus b. a and b came from the set 0 through 9, and that essentially means that we've got a 1 or a 2-digit number here. And then let's recall by the definition of our function p, we know that p evaluated at n will be a times b.
So let's see, putting this setup into our goal equation now turns into the following equation. So we'll have n squared minus 2005. So that's 10a plus b squared minus 2005 all over 11 equals p of n, but that's a times b. I'm actually gonna multiply the 11 up and get 11a times b. So now let's move some things around. Let's maybe like square this out. So that's gonna be 100a squared plus 20ab plus b squared equals 11ab plus 2005. I moved the 2005 over. Now I'll move this 11ab over and that'll leave me with 100a squared plus 9ab plus b squared equals 2005. And now from here, we can do some further approximations to restrict the possible values of A. So let's maybe now note that if A is bigger than or equal to five, that means A squared is bigger than or equal to 25, which means A squared times 100. In other words, 100A squared is bigger than or equal to 2,500. But that's problematic because that means the left-hand side of this, so I'll just say left-hand side for this stuff that I'm underlining in pink is bigger than or equal to 2,500, but 2,500 is bigger than 2005, which is this right-hand side, which I'll underline in blue. So that means A cannot be bigger than or equal to five. That further restricts our value of A to be between zero and four. So we have A comes from the set zero, one, two, three, four. And from here, it's just like casework to finish it off. So let's maybe say case zero will be the case when A is equal to zero and see if this works out. Let's notice if we get A equals zero, then this thing zeroes out, this thing zeroes out, and we end up with the equation B squared equals 2005. But this in fact has no solution. That's because 2005 is not a perfect square. You can check that pretty easily. Then maybe we'll move on to the next case. So case number one, that'll be the case when A is equal to one. So that's gonna collapse everything to the quadratic equation given by B squared plus nine B minus 1,905 equals zero. So I moved some things around, but that's pretty easy to do from this equation just with A equals one. Then you probably wanna check if there's an integer solution to this. You can do that by looking at the discriminant. So the discriminant, which is sometimes given the symbol delta, so that's B squared minus four AC. So B squared, that's gonna be 81 minus four AC, so that'll be plus four, and then 1905. But you can check that this is also not a square. And since this is not a square, that means that this thing does not have an integer solution. So in this case, we also cannot factor it. You could also check that if you wanted to. Then maybe case number two and three, I'll let you do on your own, but you'll end up with no solution in that case either. And that leaves us with the last case. I'll call that case four. That's when A is equal to four. So that um, collapses this thing into the following quadratic equation. We have B squared plus 36B minus 405 equals zero. But luckily enough, this thing actually factors fairly easily. So this factors like B minus nine times B plus 45 equals zero. But this B minus nine tells us that B would be equal to nine. That's a solution to this. And so that gives us our solution, A equals four, and then B equals nine. So in the end, N is equal to 49.
So let's finish this thing off just by checking that 49 satisfies this equation. So we just determined that 49 seems like it'll be a solution to our problem over here. Let's maybe go ahead and check that to make sure. So that means we need to do 49 squared minus 2005 over 11. So 49 squared ends up being 2,401 minus 2,005. We have that's all over 11. So let's see, this ends up being 396 over 11. So 396 is in fact equal to 36. But what is 36? 36 is nothing other than four times nine. But notice four times nine is exactly P evaluated at 49. So linking this all together, we see that we have indeed satisfied this equation over here. And that's a good place to stop.